Ambassador. Welcome, Ambassador Munoz. It's a pleasure to be here with you today talking about your new book. Okay. Uh, I wanted to start with the obvious question, which is what made you decide to write the book? Well, it was uh, an a intense experience that I had in Pakistan investigating the assassination of Benazir Bhutto. And immediately after I completed that task and delivered the report to the Secretary General, there was a change in government in my country, in Chile. I was the ambassador of Chile to the United Nations. I'm a political appointee, and a new government came in of the opposition. So I had free time first. And second, uh, there were a lot of publishing houses interested in the story, behind the scenes, beyond the report. And I took some notes, and uh, I decided that uh, I could write something uh, a bit more exciting than a dry report and tell uh, the people of the United States, uh, of Pakistan, and the world what has transpired during the investigation, which was as important as what we actually wrote in the report. That's what led me to do that. And then there was also a, a personal commitment to the story of Benazir Bhutto, because she had, um, in, in a sense, put her life at risk, and she knew that there were threats against her life, and nevertheless, there were higher values for her, the recovery of democracy in Pakistan, the idea of, uh, of uh, uh, making the radicalization in Pakistan a, a thing of the past, controlling the armed forces on the part of a civilian government. All of that was very close to my own experience because I was a dissident against the dictatorship in my own country mm -hmm. for almost 20 years, and I was even underground, and I felt uh, very close to that story of Benazir Bhutto, and that's why that was another motive to write it. Uh, can you talk some about how it differed from the commission report that caused a huge controversy when it came to out in Pakistan right. a few years ago? Well, it, it differs quite a bit in, in the sense that I, I go into the history of Pakistan. In cases of political impunity, of other political assassinations, I go into the story of Benazir Bhutto and her family, which is mm -hmm. uh, a story unto itself, uh, a, a bit like the Kennedys, uh, the equivalent of the Kennedys in, 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 in Pakistan, with a lot of tragedy I into it, by the way, because today, out of that whole family, uh, father was killed by uh, a dictator, Zia ul Haq, in, in, in the late 70s. And the two brothers, younger brothers and Benazir Bhutto, also died uh, violent deaths. Mm -hmm. The only person that survives is a sister mm -hmm. who was not involved in politics. And uh, when you look at the Kennedys, it's something like that. So uh, there were these uh, elements that, uh, that I wanted to, to bring uh, to the fore that were by no means in the, in the report, and also a reflection uh, that is not in the report either about the relationship between the United States and Pakistan because the United States has been a critical actor in Pakistan since the birth of Pakistan in 1947 after the partition between India and, and Pakistan. So all of those elements uh, make up a good three-fourths of the, of the book mm -hmm. and, uh, but there is one part, the assassination itself, the day of the assassination where we go um, you know, hour by hour about what's going on uh, with Benazir Bhutto, with her convoy, arriving to the political rally after which she was assassinated. Uh, all of that is based on the report, but it's, it's a very small part compared to what uh, the book is all about. Right, right, right. No, I found that part particularly interesting, you know, getting every minute at what was happening. Right. Um, I, I did find it interesting also how you started the book, and I actually have to say that I, I laughed out loud. Um, mm -hmm. Having been there during this in Pakistan during this entire time, mm -hmm. uh, and you start the book with, uh, it's January of 2009, uh, you're on vacation with right. your wife in Chile, right. and uh, you, you describe getting an urgent quote unquote call from uh, the UN Secretary General's mm -hmm. office yeah. about heading up this commission. Yeah. And what made me laugh is the whole idea that uh, it's an urgent call and it's coming, you know, more than a year after the actual assassination of yeah. Be Benazir Bhutto. Can mm -hmm. you talk about the challenges of going mm -hmm. in, and, and mm -hmm. then you didn't even end up going there until July. Can yeah. you talk about the challenges mm -hmm. of trying to investigate this so long after the fact? Mm -hmm. 
Well, it, it, it was a, a not only a challenging uh, investigation in the sense that it was you know, no less than the assassination of a former prime right. minister who was a, a, an international leader, uh, but also uh, this was a commission that was not going to establish penal responsibilities about who committed the crime. It was going to establish the facts and the circumstances. So it was not going to be a tribunal, mm -hmm. which um, uh, obviously meant that it didn't have the force that a tribunal would have. Uh, we wouldn't be able to simply uh, command uh, testimonies from individuals. Um, we would have to do it in a, on a voluntary basis. And at the same time, I thought it was a very challenging situation because public opinion would expect that our report would point to the smoking gun mm -hmm. to about who did it. Uh, so I thought it was a sort of a loose, loose, loose situation. My president, when I asked for permission, because I was a sitting ambassador, this was highly unusual that, that a sitting ambassador would be charged with, with such a high responsibility. Uh, my president, uh, 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 Michel Bachelet, who had been actually contacted by the widower of uh, Benazir Bhutto so that there would be international support to this request of the investigations, which turned into an official request by the time Zardari, the widower of Benazir Bhutto, became president of Pakistan, um, said to me, yes, uh, do it. This mm -hmm. is good for Chile. This speaks highly of our prestige and of our own, my own personal tra trajectory. And going into Pakistan, it was uh, very difficult because uh, the leaking of information was one of the main obstacles that we had to our task. Our task obviously was very reserved. And uh, the minute we arrived, uh, I was, uh, in fact, as we were flying to Islamabad, about to fly from, from JFK, I was told that my, my computer had been hacked. Uh, my, my, my chief of staff and that perhaps we should suspend the, the, the trip to Pakistan. And I, and I said, no, uh, we, we have to go. And on a stopover in Dubai, the Department of Security and Safety of the United Nations recommended that I would not go out of the red zone of, of Islamabad, the sort of the safe zone of Islamabad, the capital. I had no Pakistan. idea there was a red zone of Islamabad. Yeah, there, there, there <laughs> is a security zone. Uh, and, uh, and I said no because I wanted to go to Rawalpindi uh, which is uh, like a suburb of Islamabad where Benazir Bhutto had been assassinated. Mm -hmm. and I thought it was fundamental for us, for our commission to go and, and see the site and speak to the police and speak to witnesses. So uh, we ended up uh, doing that and in order to uh, avoid the press from following us or anybody that might want us harm, um, we decided to on a ploy putting in our program that we would go at uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon the next day and we ended up going at 5 a.m. in a convoy and uh, it was all fine and good until we arrived there and the police put uh, blockaded about uh, you know two blocks a perimeter so that nobody could could access the place where we were and but we saw people you know like two blocks away and we couldn't find out and one of the commissioners was uh, the former deputy uh, police chief of Ireland told me, you know, you know who they are? And I said, I don't know, can't distinguish. They're journalists. God forbid. They're, <laughs> they, uh, they are a bunch of journalists with cameras and with telephoto uh, uh, lenses, uh, and somebody had tipped them off. And we, uh, we thought that we had avoided any, any, any undue presence, and they were there. Uh, the leaking of information was content. That was a tremendous uh, challenge. And uh, also, a government that was very helpful at the beginning, because the Sadari government had requested this investigation mm -hmm. from the UN. Uh, they received us quite warmly. They provided the logistical support, the security support. But as the process went on and the Commission began to investigate uh, in an independent fashion, and asking hard questions and maybe stepping on some toes, uh, we felt increasingly less welcome than at the beginning and the cooperation was not full, mm -hmm. even on the part of that, of that government. Aside from the fact that we faced a lot of individuals and sectors that uh, did not want the investigation 
and that obviously wanted harm uh, n n for certain uh, 